The Materialism of Max Stirner and Karl Marx While Stirner himself has largely become a forgotten thinker, Stirner's materialism is often more so forgotten, as it is usually swept under the rug in favor of his individualist anarchist stances. In this video, I plan to revive some of Stirner's materialist philosophy. I will be using Marxist materialist conception of history as a basis, first for explaining historical materialism, and from this I will explain Stirner's materialism, and how it differs from that of Marx and Engels. While both students of Hegel, Stirner is considered to be more anti-Hegelian than Marx. Part 1. The central primary division between the radical materialist philosophies of Max Stirner and Karl Marx is that of collectivism and individualism. The materialism of Marx is, for the mo most part, a collectivist materialism, focusing on man's labor, the products of such labor, and the relationship man enters into when performing his, his laborious task. For Stirner, materialism is an individualist philosophy that takes notice of man, his mind, as well as, quote, humanity. Part 2. The Abstract, Commodification, and Fetishism. For Marx, even such basic necessities like food and water have become commodified. Further, our lives themselves have been transformed into nothing more than a commodity. The very actions man undertakes to ensure his survival are now tied up with the profits of others. Thus, this social relation between capitalist and proletarian, labor and product, have been altered from something that was material and concrete to that which is abstract and immaterial. The conclusion to this abstraction of what was once material is that the commodification of labor becomes like keys to an infant hung over the heads of the working class. Their own labor, the products of their labor, are now just out of arm's reach, causing them to endlessly and hopelessly pursue the almost always unattainable goals of higher wages, raised living standards and benefits, etc. For Stirner, commodification, mystification, and abstraction has certainly occurred. Stirner, however, was more focused on man and his mind. The idea that man has become commodified is likely an area where both Marx and Stirner would have agreed. The cause of this commodification is where they diverge in thought. In the eyes of Max Stirner, thoughts were simply products of the brain, therefore man and his mind were physical things. Mind is necessarily individual. Quote, the state, society, humanity, the church, and so on all connote the concept that groups rather than individuals possess a singular physicality. Stirner boldly rejects these institutions as nothing more than spooks of the mind, immaterial and abstract concepts that deserve to be done away with, and instead one should proclaim, quote, I alone am corporeal. In this outright rejection of such groups being material, Stirner asserts that man alone, the individual, is corporeal, material, and tangible, unlike the abstract, non-physical concepts such as society that man has agreed to build up in his mind and are more often than not temporary concepts. From this, it's fair to say that Stirner found Marx's materialism to be unacceptable, as labor, its product, and such relations were not material to begin with. Therefore, they could not be abstracted away. They already were abstractions to Stirner. Um, you could consider Stirner somewhat of a a rejection of Platonism, but he takes it to a much higher degree. It's almost like, I would consider it, and I believe Stern even used the term in the ego in his own, social nominalism. But what Ben is doing the abstracting, the fetishizing, the commodifying of man? For Stirner, it is the idea that mankind has a duty to pursue a more perfect humanity. This idea has enslaved man, whereas Marx, man is commodified in his relation to production. Stirner declares that man is commodified in his incessant chase after the idea of a godlike perfection of humanity, which is held over and against him like keys to an infant by the abstract, intangible, immaterial, and truly incorporeal politics of the church, state, and society. Thus, humanity has become an abstraction, no longer grounded in reality, but instead a mere utopian, unachievable concept. In that abstraction, our humanity has been stolen from us, and has in fact become our enemy. What was so certain to man is now an abstract, fetishized example that not only is held over and above him, but be can be used to punish him for not meeting its perfect standards. Part 3. Max and Karl address the problem. The solution, according to Marx, was obviously communism. For Marx, the root of commodification was private property, and to end commodification, private property must be abolished. Marx envisioned and focused on the role of the working class in accomplish at accomplishing this by emancipating themselves from a system of private property and wages, thus man returns to a species being in the true sense of the word. Um, this sort of gets into 
some of the newer Marxist thought about um, it Marx says in the German ideology how um, communism is not an ideal to which reality will have to adjust itself. We call communism the real movement, which abolishes the present state of things. As for Stirner, he recommended that man take back what was taken from him by the immaterial, the intangible, the incorporeal, the state, the church, society, the corporate world, and if I may use the term, all big others that stand in the way of the individual. For Sterner, these falsely corporeal institutions have stolen our very ownership. They have stolen that which can only belong to the individual, that which has the quality of being our own, the material, the bodily, the tangible, the corporeal.